You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're deciding to look at things positively. And as always, my name is Paul. And as always, my name's Rob, and uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna say hello, thank you, welcome. I don't know. I I don't know why I got caught by surprise with this particular opening, but uh, as usual, we are incredibly grateful that uh, you guys spend a few minutes of your day hanging out with us. So thank you. Yes, thank you indeed. We do appreciate it. We've got a question today regarding uh, being best prepared for in-person trainings and what type of people might find value from that. We uh. We appreciate this question. We did not actually ask for this question. Um, But uh, if you do have a question, go to askadroneu.com. I think there are actually some cool topics we have yet to discuss as far as uh, Cinewhoops and the value that uh, flying Cinewhoop or being able to fly line of sight and FPV, how important that is and how that opens up the door for you. You know, we can talk about, uh, or if you have questions regarding NFTs, if you have uh, questions regarding kind of uh, advanced drone operations, and there's a lot of nuanced drone ops going out there. So send in those questions, askdroneu.com. As always, thank you again for those questions. We do appreciate it. Hey guys, my name is Ike. So I'm new to the drone world. I've only just started playing with Maps Made Easy and my Phantom 4 Pro V2. I'm having a ton of fun learning from the Drone U courses online and then trying things out for myself. Now my question should be an easy layup for you guys to boost your in-person training sessions because I'm curious. Who are your in-person trainings geared for? Are you expecting your students to have a certain amount of experience? Or could someone who's only watched some of the videos attend and really come away knowing how to produce deliverables for clients? I guess, can you describe your ideal student? Whatever your answer is, I hope I get to attend a class soon. And thank you guys in person for helping to welcome in new people to such a cool industry. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thank you, Ike. Um, Cool name, by the way. I wonder if that's a a nickname or or what. But... um, so let's let's start out with what are we looking for in a student? I'm actually, you know, I was thinking about this show and, and what to say and even kind of teed up one of the points I wanted to make uh, regarding our trainings uh, versus what people might find elsewhere. But, you know, Rob, I am curious as to uh, your perspective on this regarding uh, just how much experience you believe uh, someone needs to have in order to join us for an in-person training. And I'll just say, too, just so you understand, Drone you and our in-person trainings, typically we ask people to go to Flight Mastery before any of our other in-person trainings because we find it so important that all the students kind of operate on the same protocols, the same systems, because it makes our classes run a lot smoother. And these systems also make it much easier for pilots to operate with other pilots. So, Rob, I'm curious uh, as to your perspective on this. I know you normally just sit there and, and look at me and say, well, what do you think? I, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts here. Oh, do I do that too much? <laughs> I'll start talking more. Anyways. <laughs> so, no, definitely have some thoughts. And fortunately, we've trained um, a lot, a lot, a lot of pilots. And so we have seen, like, specifically people come in. And we've get, we get this question a fair amount Actually, a lot of times people reach out to us and say, hey, I'm really interested in this class, but do I qualify or am I ready? Depending on how their perspective goes, uh, will dictate how they ask that question. But I will tell you this, and this is true just learning in general. And the number one quality from my perspective is to be teachable. Mm. And if I may make the kid reference again, it's what I've taught my kids from day one. You have to be teachable. You have to know you don't know everything. Michael Jordan didn't know everything in the last season that he played. He still had a coach and he still learned, right? So you have to be teachable. And that's number one. If you can come in, because we have had people that come into our classes, but I kind of get the sense that they've come in to tell what they know instead of learn. Mm. I would say that's the exception. 
thankfully, but it happens. And uh, that is not the right perspective to come into any learning situation with. So I think that's number one. And I think if you have that, you have the opportunity to be successful. Beyond that, one of the questions that we get more than any is, is your mapping class specifically for a beginner? Mm. And it, like if I had to give a black and white answer, I would say no. Huh. To be fair. That said, we've had many relatively new pilots come to the mapping class and do just fine. But that's because they did the work before coming. And one of the things that we'll say is if you really want to come to the mapping class, then do these things before you come. One is practice flying, right? And then number two is go through the resources that we have in our membership that will prepare you as sort of prerequisites for the mapping class because it's uh, it's a great primer for coming to the mapping class. It's going to get you the... <clears throat> the verbiage, um, the specific ways that we approach things, Paul approaches things, our other our instructors approach things in terms of mapping. And if you do that, then yeah, I think you can come to the mapping class as a quote unquote beginner. In terms of learning to fly, then you know, you're know you going to want to start with generally, unless you've been flying a little bit on your own, probably our flight introduction class, which is a great little class and it's a half day. And that's even a great primer for coming into the flight mastery class, being more prepared. And once you've been through the flight mastery class, a full day of flight training through our exercises that are time tested and proven, I think you're going to be golden for, for whatever those next steps are based upon what your goals are for your business. So teachable, do make sure you, you, approach it with sort of a progression based perspective. Don't jump into the deep end without being able to swim, so to speak. Mm. And I think you're going to be fine. And so I think of somebody like Ike and the fact that you're asking the question and pursuing the knowledge and information prior to jumping in tells me that you would be fine. I mean, that's all I need to know probably about you is that you're going to be fine. But I love, we love when people just reach out and say, hey, this is what I'm interested in. What path should I take? And then we will guide you because there is a path for you. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, when I think of the type of people that are coming to these classes, you know, I, it's funny. I always think of flight mastery first as it's kind of our most comprehensive flight training uh, as mm -hmm. a whole. But I mean, when I think of who's the right person to go to that, the right person to go to that is someone who understands the basic motions on the sticks. They understand pitch, roll, yaw. Uh, an elevation, right? And then as long as you have that basic understanding of the remote, whether you're brand new or super advanced, we've been able to help build confidence and systems across the board. Yeah. I think it's just like if you are absolutely brand new and you've never touched the remote before, flight mastery might not be for you. But I mean, we've had students who've had like four or five flight hours on their birds come in and crush it. And I think like you said, Rob, you know, if you are a member and you are familiar with some of our classes like the Don't Crash course and the operations class specifically, you know, you can pair that with, um, uh, what is it called? You can pair that with our drills and exercise classes mm -hmm. and then come into Flight Mastery and, you know, just crush it. And I will say, you know, there are some people who've, uh, we've had students who've gone to other trainings and come to us and I love hearing their feedback because they're like, man, every detail that you teach in these exercises, I see now why it's so important. And I see why you say these things on the show and on the podcast. But when you actually come out here and fly them, it like makes sense. Um, you know, for example, the way that we instruct people to go through uh, the box drill at the beginning of the day of really, you know, um, teaching them the, the idea of consistent slow motions on the stick learning the active break to really gauge and have a perception of true line of sight flight. Because once you have that depth perception in understanding the active break and then slowly pushing the envelope, it really helps pilots better discern where they are in the airspace. And we have very specific means of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also the only flight school uh, for drones that teaches not only line of sight flight techniques, but FPV flight techniques. And then we have literal exercises within the 
exercises that teach people the operating differences between flying FPV and line of sight and how orientation um, perception really changes depending on how you're flying. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, in all honesty, I would say that I'm not just saying this to try to get everyone to come to Flight Mastery, um, but I will say that whether you're super advanced, I'll help you build better systems to fly safer and more consistently every single time. If you're newer, I will help you build those same systems, but also teach you the right foundation to continue growing in your flight motions, your capability, your ability to fly close proximity, fly in tunnels, uh, you know, your ability to get nice, smooth, cinematic shots. In all honesty, Rob, I mean, I I know we have some uh, enterprise clients, some props clients coming up for some, uh, some training. And I will say, I know some of these trainings are flight mastery plus an extra day because some of these people have spent time with us. And they're like, yeah, we love flight mastery, but we want to do one more day with the advanced flight mastery stuff, the uh, optional exercises and operational examples, because the confidence that you gain from that is just, I, that's one of the things that really makes me happy as an instructor is really seeing people grasp and retain material, practice it and learn it. And then realize once you implement these systems, it's a lot easier to have super safe flights and it's a lot easier to have really killer skill. Yeah, absolutely. They come in timid oftentimes, not always, Yeah, but almost always for those that do come in a little timid, they leave feeling like they can do this. Yeah. And that's super cool. The only other thing I think I would add with respect to the mapping class specifically in terms of who it's built for, I mean, I want to be careful here, but it, it you're going to have a much better experience if you have a reasonably good grasp of computing and, and getting around a computer, right? Sounds basic and you uh, you think, well, it's 2022. Why are you even saying that? Well, you'd be surprised. And so um, if you're thinking about it, just make sure you've got a, a pretty good sense and you spend some time making sure you know how to get around a computer. Yeah. In, for example, file systems and where, where files go and just things like that. It's, uh, it's going to help. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, that that basic um, technology skills really makes a, a huge difference. So it does. Um, it really does. And as far as you know, what drones to bring? We have students that come in with Mavics, Phantoms, more advanced stuff, M three hundreds, M six hundreds. While our course is built for a certain class of drones, we often still offer our burner drones to allow students to push the envelope without pushing their own envelopes. Because oftentimes, you know, fear is one of those things. Can that can inhibit us from doing what we're truly capable of. And our goal is to build that confidence to overcome that fear. Because one of the things that we always teach at these trainings is that you do not have the luxury when you are taking flight of thinking about what ifs, what if I hit this? What if I fly over that? What if I do this? What if I do that? You don't have time for that. You know why? Because as soon as you're distracted, as soon as you're thinking about these what ifs, that it's going to happen because now you're distracted from doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So I will say that not only is our flight training, you know, geared for, you know, almost absolute beginners to advance, but we're also going to um, instill a mindset of being a pilot and ultimately responsible. And I think a lot of people value that as well and find it, you know, mm-hmm. critical to their success. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Well, Ike, I hope that answers your question. And uh, as always, we love follow-up questions. So feel free. Yeah, we sure do. And uh, I will just say, it, you know, uh, I'm very excited for our plans for in-person trainings and in our move up north to Colorado. And mm-hmm. I, I really hope it works out because uh, if our plan ends up working out the way that we would like it to, uh, we would have a whole new means of in-person training. Uh, imagine a permanent fly-in. But that's all I have to tease you with today. Um, <laughs> if you want to join us for an in-person training, there are a few things I can guarantee. One, you'll have more confidence. 
Two, you'll have more skill. And three, you will have a much different perspective about how you go about flying in operations as a whole. If you'd like to join me, join Matt, join PJ, join Kevin, then you will definitely uh, be, you'll definitely not only have fun, but learn a whole lot and take away a whole lot as well. So I hope you join us. Uh, thank you for the question. Again, not one uh, we asked for, but we really appreciate it because it gives us an opportunity to explain how we are different. And I think that if you came to in-person flight training, you would very quickly realize just how different we are. But um, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.